from State Farm. <laughs> G Money from State Farm. I love it. That's pretty cool. State Farm. I remember, I think that was a State Farm commercial when he's like, okay, what are you wearing? And when the wife answered the phone, what are you wearing? He was like, I'm wearing khakis. <laughs> Hey Kaiser, how you doing? I haven't seen you in a while. How you been, babe? I haven't seen you, Kaiser. Today, today, oh look at Erica. Hey Erica, hey Kirk. Greetings, how are you? I am perfect. Today I want to talk about uh, finding your your perfect or well, your passion rather. Thank you for being here. Hey, Wanda, how you doing, babe? I want to talk about finding your, I'm doing well, uh, Erica. Thank you for joining. I think it's, well, no, I remember seeing you once before. It's been a while though, you being on my live, but I appreciate you being here. I want to talk about finding your, your passion in life. And this is piggybacking off of a video that I just posted a lady a white female in a car and she was venting about you know she used to be a, a, a waiter and then she got to maybe corporate america or cubicle style setting and she realized that they wasn't doing really nothing and she felt like it was more rewarding for her when she was serving you know she touched more people's lives right so finding your passion and for me being in this position where i am right now i really resonated and could relate and understand what the lady was talking about being that i just recently retired being that i uh, moved and being that i'm gun ho now more than anything about if you don't feel good i ain't doing it if you feel good yep that's what i'm doing i'm following my purpose in life and my passion and i encourage you to do so and you could do it and you could start doing it while you're on that job that you might not really like and don't think you're going to be there forever. Well, no, you're not going to be there forever. And you invest some of your time, put some of your attention, some of your energy in building your brand or finding that thing that you're passionate about. So this video is about finding it. So how do you find it? I hear you, sister. Hey, enlightened. How do you find it? A lot of people that I consult with, they tell me they don't know what it is. But here's some ways for you to find your passion. Ask some people around you, like your family, your friends, the close ones, right? The ones who you can maybe confide in with, you know, information or whatever. Ask them, what do you think that I'm good at? What do you see me doing? You know, ask people outside. If you can't find your passion, you don't see it for yourself, ask people outside of you. Because nine times out of 10, they gonna know. <laughs> Cause they are watching you. It's, it's easier for people, just kind of like when we see somebody going through and we could kind of like tell them, no, you caused that, you need to do da 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 da. They might not see it from your perspective because you know, they're not you is what I'm saying. So being that you're, they're outside of you, they can see what you're good at. They can see when you're happy at when you're doing this particular thing. For me, when I did this, I didn't even know what my passion was. Years ago, I did this. I'm telling you things I did to find out mine. I would ask people around me what I was good at. And everybody said the same thing. They were like, you know what? You're the type of person you help me, me see the spiritual side to everything. You help me, you know, keep myself in alignment and see the bigger purpose you always preaching to me you always have that that voice that that that, that reasoning that understanding and you could look at things from a different way it's like you you're my guide so to speak and so with that in mind i heard them but i was like look in my mind because i was when i was younger people would tell me that i was going to be a speaker you know in church and religion or whatever they told me this but i didn't want to speak so in my mind i was like i, I don't want to do that no, I don't want to do that. I don't hear that. So I blocked that particular passion out. And look at me now. <laughs> so sometimes we be running away from it. So that leads me to the next thing. Just finding the thing that you're running away from. Embracing that thing that you're running away from. 
So the first thing is asking people in your circle so they can tell you. The second thing is embracing that thing that you're running away from. Because nine times out of ten, the very thing that you're running away from is really your calling, really your purpose. It's funny how our blessings be behind the very thing in life that we don't want to embrace for. So find that thing that you don't want to embrace. At least pay attention to what it is. Because even your hurt, your trauma, whatever, you know, people are fine, you know, like their passion is speaking or helping somebody that been through some things that they've been through like see like for example you know like domestic violence like people maybe who have got be in relationships or whatever they begin later on once they heal that broken heart and in trauma and rewrite that story now they want to be a spokesperson for that cause so now that's their passion and they're so passionate about it because they can relate with those people and they've been through those things already that's another way so asking people around you is one then embracing the very thing that you don't want to do let me check this these comments right here because i look like i'm missing a whole bunch of stuff up in here hi 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 let's talk about what you look for in a man i don't <laughs> i don't look <laughs> I hear you, sister. I don't look, babe. I'm, I draw people to me. That's me. Yeah, love your content, queen sister. Okay, thank you. Thank you. This is my truth. I'm just coming by to say hello. Oh, you need to charge. Okay, Kaiser, thank you for being here. Okay. All right, so I'm caught up on the um, comments. And then, number three. Number three is ask yourself, and this is you going within, Ask yourself, what is it that I like to do? Or what is it that I do when nobody is around? And I can do this thing and I don't even care about money. <laughs> I can do this thing even if I'm not receiving anything back. So what is that thing for you? For me, my lie in actually speaking, because let me tell you, I, I have two actually. One lies in speaking and inspiring others, right? And two lies within me creating my brain, my products that I make, right? Because I'm the type of person on a Saturday or a day, you know, when there's no work or nothing, this is what I know about me. So I'm trying, I'm telling you what I know about me. So maybe you can find out what you know about you and help you with your journey. With me, when I, there's lonely times or quiet times in my life, I would literally be talking to myself, inspiring myself as if I'm encouraging myself, as if I'm an evangelist per se. I'm preaching to myself. Now, mind you, this is my higher self that is speaking life into me, but my, I'm actually talking. And there are times when my partner, my children, or somebody will come in the room and be like, you all right? Because I'll be having a full, you know how people talk to themselves? I'm talking about talking to another level. Like, you better get yourself up and you better da 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 da. I mean, going all in. So that's how I know that's one of mine. Because I don't care if nobody ain't even listening to me when I'm talking. That's why sometimes I just go hit and record on my camera. <laughs> and I'm just doing all kinds of things or whatever. But there's words that's being spoken to me. And I could just do a voiceover later because that comes easily to me. The second thing that I do when nobody is around is I'm a creator. I like creating products. I like I like um, dealing with soaps and lotions and, and, and detoxes and, and finding out in what certain herbs do. And I like to sit with myself. I like to sit and feel how my body feels when I try different things that are for um, the healing of the body, you know? Like, um, for example, like holy basil, for, for example, when I first consumed it. Just finding out, not based upon what I read, just making me some, doing a, drinking me some at a high potency, sitting down and talking and feeling and experiencing, paying attention to what's happening to my inner being from that. I love studying herbs. So putting all that together, that correlates with me having my brand of lotions and body butters and beer oil and shampoos and all that. And, and after I make it, I love using it for me. I love my family using it. Right now, my website is closed right now, and I'm not selling anything, but yet I'm still, that's what's in the back back here, I'm still sending my mother and my sisters and my children 
shoving my product and using it for myself. So those two things are my passion because I can do that when nobody else is around and I feel good doing it. And I'm, I, I know about it. I know what I'm doing. It, know what I'm doing. I know that it's healing the body. Healing the body. And as a matter of fact, when I send it, I'm like, oh man, I can't wait. In my mind, I'm like, oh man, I can't wait till she tries this because this here is going to help her with da-da-da-da-da. And oh, I can't wait till he tries this because it has da-da-da-da-da in there and I know it'll help him with da-da-da-da in my mind. And that makes me feel good. So it's the thing that you do when nobody else is around and you're not even getting money for it. You could just do it anyway. And you could constantly do it. And if you're getting money from it, oh, that's that's like extra. That's like, oh, okay, you're gonna pay me? But I enjoyed it. It is so important that you do what feels good. And this is coming from somebody that I've worked, I worked actually since I was, what, about 16 years old. I'm not about to tell y'all how old I am now. But I worked for a long time, even prior to this 22 year retirement that, that I just went to. And it was at one point in my journey when I thought working hard was the key, but when I stumbled upon spirituality, it is not the key. You could do it that way, but you're gonna resent it a little later, just like that video I posted. It's not about working hard. It's about feeling good. It's about finding your passion. Because see, this is called, that's when you're in alignment. And then when you get in alignment, you draw money. You draw people that's going to come and buy from you. You draw experiences to you when you are in alignment. So that is really the key to it all, being in alignment. So that's why finding your passion in life is so important in your journey. When I started off in my journey, I worked hard, hard, hard because I'm going to tell you why. Because as a little girl, I thought if I worked hard and I got good grades and I made all A's, daddy would come back home. If I was overachieving, I kept my room clean and if I helped with cutting the grass and I helped my stepdaddy who was a contractor and I, I helped with all the strong, strenuous stuff that I was going to be a good girl and all of this stuff in my physical reality that I was seeing and not wanting to experience like my daddy not being there, all of that would go away and daddy would come home and then I wouldn't have to work no more. But it was something that kind of like stuck with me and I constantly kept on working hard, hard, hard. When I was in high school, I was in a point in my life where I worked three jobs. I would get off from school and, you know, I had early release. I would get off from school and I would go to, to that little early release program, which was a job at the Jefferson Parish School Board Office. Then I would go and I would work at a clothing store. I think it was called One Price Clothing. Then I would go and I would work and I would deliver... Uh, there was a moment I delivered pizzas. There was a moment I worked at Kentucky Fried Chicken, casual mail, big and tall stores, you know, just, just retail and fast food, retail and fast food. And I was working hard. I was working hard for a long, long, long time. <laughs> a long time and that's not the key. And as I grew and evolved and got into my career, even though I had not been working physically hard, mentally I was still working hard. I always ended up with a tedious job, with the job that had the co-worker who didn't want to do their job, and their job fell on my, on my lap. I'm telling you, once you get into a mindset set, it stays with you until you rewrite that story. Until you decide, okay, I'm not going to work hard no more, I'm going to just be. I'm going to be in alignment with my passion. I'm going to throw all of that stuff away because you don't, get a, you don't get a little trophy for working hard. You get more work when you work hard because everybody else is going to think, oh, she's going to get it done. Let's give it to her. And so they're taking your life force when that happens to you in the physical world. They're taking your life force, your energy is being drained by that. And then that's when you start looking with the way. That's when you start looking a little older. That's when you start getting stressed. And stress is a silent killer. That's when your immune system weakens. Because since your immune system is weakened from the stress, now you're getting sick. Now you're tired. Now, now you have irritable bowel syndrome. Now you're not releasing because you're clogged up. Because you're not in alignment. And that's when all of the chaos starts. It is so important that you find your passion. It is so important that you stay in alignment. It is so important that you feel good. So find that thing, whatever it is, find that thing that make you feel good. <laughs> Use those three, those three steps to help you identify what that thing is too. Let's see, this is my truth. Yeah, let's see what else. Hello, hello, good afternoon from Jersey. Hey, how you doing? What is that, eye caps? Hey, tell it chosen me. Thank you for being here, chosen me. Hi, Aura. Thank you for being here. I have um, tested some of the strongest women. 
We're black. Wow, strength, God is respect. Yeah, and that's another thing too. If you're black on here, I really believe that we we have this 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 um this idea, this belief that we're supposed to work hard. We don't want to be labeled as lazy. So we work hard just because of that sometimes mentally, because we don't want nobody to call us lazy. But baby, there are people in the physical reality that's making a whole lot of money, that's really, really happy, that go golfing, that's chillaxing. <laughs> they ain't working hard. They're working smart and they're able to just be and they're not stressed. They're not stressed. They have time for family. They have time for friends. They have time to do what's important for them during their day. See, we when, we, when we get into this work hard mindset, we are cashing in all of our time. And time is energy. You turn the word time backwards and you have the word emit. E-M-I-T. So you're emitting your energy. You're trading in your time for some money. And so when you're trading your time, your, your thoughts, you don't have time to let this new mind be in me. It's a little bit harder to get your focus. When you done traded in your time or you emitted all of your time to something outside of you to work hard on. When really and truly, if you emit some of that time to your inner being, to how you feel really matters, to how, to how your passion and you in alignment with your passion, <laughs> then you'll even get farther than you would on that job that you're emitting your time to and giving your energy to and you really don't like being there. <laughs> this is something I've been through personally. I'm not telling you nothing that I don't even never really even talk on my page about something that I've already been through. How you feel matters. Your passion matters. You came forth in the physical reality to leave us a gift. Before you came here, you probably forgot now since you're in your avatar, but before you came forth, you had a gift that you were going to give us. Let us see your gift. <laughs> Walk into your purpose, find your passion, do what feels good to you. Because when you get in alignment with that, even your health gonna improve. The way you think gonna change. You're gonna have a new mind. You're gonna feel good. You're gonna have that in church, they call it the spiritual buoyancy. When you fall down, you just bounce back up because you're bouncing back up on your happiness. You're bouncing back up on your passion. Okay? All right, let's see what else here. Hi, love. Hey, how you doing, babe? All right, let's see. You from New Orleans? Yes, I am from New Orleans. My mother is black and our resilience is unmatched. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, definitely. It's the resilience for things outside of you when it's not even an alignment. The elders had us believe in this, I think. I believe that the elders have us believe in it and we just picked it up. But this new generation, if you pay attention to them, a lot of them coming forward and they ain't forward. <laughs> a lot of this new generation, they ain't, they, ain't, they ain't doing the church thing. They ain't trying to work hard. They, and, some, and some of the elders, they'll be like, oh, look at this new generation. They don't want work. They don't want to do nothing. I don't know what's wrong with them. But you got to understand, you got to look at both sides. And I'm not trying to take a side, but I look at the all. You got to look at the new generation. They not as being lazy, but it's realizing that it's insane to do the same thing over and over and, accept, and expect different results. So they, they, they're not going to sit there and accept the fact that they got to be a slave, you know, that they got to work hard. They got to be unhappy. A lot of the new generation is trying to find themselves and, and do what feels good to them. And some of the elders, they might say, oh, that's lazy. No, no, no. You got to look at it in a different light. Everybody don't want to be stressed out all of their days. Everybody don't want to work. You remember Grandpa used to talk about a story about, yeah, well, you know, when I was a little boy, I used to walk 10 miles in the snow with no shoes on to get to the to the work and, and mass it out of that out. Who wants to do that again, Grandpa? Why you did that? Why are you talking about that? Everybody don't want to be like that, Grandpa. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Get to you, get to your place in your life when you know what your passion is. Make room for it now if you own a job that you don't like. Make room for it. Get your LLC going right now, you know? Get, get, your, get your brand, get your logo going if you have some type of passion already. If you're not even that far where you know what the passion is, get to asking people what, you, what they think you're good at. Get to asking yourself 
What is it that I'm running from? What could I do? What could I do when nobody is around and I just feel good about doing it? Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, I want to know all these ladies hold the voodoo. <laughs> oh no, all these ladies don't do voodoo, babe. It's, it, that's not the truth, but okay. That courage. Hey, Trey, thank you for being here. Let's see, they fighting back, not going away. They fighting back, not going along to get along. Exactly, because they don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. I tell you one thing, um, somebody real close to me, a younger man, he had this job. He's like a teenager. He had this job and he was like trying to get, you know, kind of like a promotion, like to, but they were actually making him do this job without paying him, right? So he had told them about it and they said that they were gonna do it. A week had passed later and this dude said, I went back, Miss B. And I was like, what you mean? He was like, I went back, I got my freedom back. He quit the job. I was like, oh my God, that is such a beautiful thing. He quit the job and he excelled in his life after that. He was like, yeah, I'm not gonna let them play me like that, Miss B. So he went, I just admire stuff like that. I admire people walking in their truth and not allowing fear to be their stumbling block, allowing themselves to walk by faith and not allowing, you know, situations define who you gonna be. Like some people, they would just sit there and be like, oh, well, they didn't give, they didn't give me the raise, so I, I guess I'ma just have to say, I guess I ain't worried there. Hmm. But the younger generation, like I say he was, they, they don't fall for that. They, they not about to hear that. Oh no, oh no. Yes. I was guilt-tripped by both sides of the family. Dad came to America and overworked, yeah. Yeah, but what the beautiful thing about it is that when you look or read or research the laws of um, attraction, the law of uh, assumption, when you really get spiritual with this thing, you find out about the laws and it's more mental work than physical work. You're like, wait a minute. All I had to do was just here? Wait a minute, I've been working hard and, and all I had to do was just be, just be in alignment? <laughs> Wait, let me reprogram this here thing. Let me let me hit pump the brakes a little bit because I was I was doing it fast. I was going down the lane that I didn't even need to travel by. And so at that moment, you could just change your mind. You could you could rest. Then you could rest if you're a woman. You could rest in your feminine energy more. You know, and you realize that you could just have those thoughts going on what it is that you were longing for. You could just sit there and be thankful in your mind. That this situation has already worked out. You can begin to say that. That's what I say. Like anytime there's like something that come up, I say in my inner voice, my habitual thoughts, I feel so thankful that this situation is already resolved. <laughs> I don't just jump on it like I used to. That, that little girl that had three jobs at once upon a time, she used to, she would want to jump on it to figure it out, to fix it. But now, with the wisdom I obtained in my spiritual journey, I said, no, I feel so thankful that this situation has already worked itself out. So I let my thoughts work for me. I let my subconscious mind yield to me the things that I want, and I ain't got to work that hard no more. I do that with money. I do that with, with, with anything, anything in the physical, financially, physically, spiritually, emotionally. I feel so thankful that this situation has already been worked out. And I trust that. I trust it. Because we all are connected to infinite intelligence. We done already did this here already. We just came forward to figure out why we made these choices and why we did it. Everything is already created because energy is already created. It's neither created nor destroyed. So everything that you ever could desire is already here anyway. So what, what, what we working hard for? What we tripping off of for anyway? When you really think about this energetic thing, you, you, sit, you, you sit back and look at the big picture instead of being all in and trying to, trying to fix it, trying to work, trying to do hard things. And you sit back, you realize, oh, really all I have to do is be still 
and know that I'm God and that being still part is being in alignment with your purpose, your passion, feeling good and trusted and having faith. It's really that, that simple, but we on a journey made it hard. Our grandparents made it hard. And so, and so if we go into this ancestry talk, we're just the ancestors writing our wrongs. So if they made it all, why in the hell are we constantly trying to keep on working hard? I thought we were supposed to be writing our wrongs, so to speak. If we, the ancestors reincarnated, don't you think? That maybe, okay, if I, if I messed up back then, if I so-called did it wrong back then, which we really don't never get anything wrong. If I had that experience back then like that and it turned out, not so good. Well, let me do something different. Let me do it this, this way instead. Maybe it'll turn out a little bit better, a little bit different from what I created last lifetime. So lifetime after lifetime, you're going to keep on doing the same thing, expecting a different result of working hard, of being a slave. So no longer are you the slave mentally. I mean, physically, you turn in the next lifetime and be the slave mentally. No, this lifetime, let's not be the mental slave too. This lifetime, let this new mind be in us. So the next lifetime will be easier and easier and easier until we really tap into our full brain capacity, the Christ conscious one in human form. That's it. That's it. Let me see. That courage. Yeah. Yeah. And expected us to do the same. You're right about that. You are so right about that. Okay, that's it. I just wanted to share that with you because it was on my heart while I was making this stuff for my mom and my family. You all have a beautiful day. This video was from my heart to yours, baby. Be blessed and go find that passion. Walk into it too. Bye, baby.